Here we have both the skein winder on the left and the swift on the right. They're actually identical units. They look a little different, of course, because I have yarn wound on the skein winder. But also, you'll notice on the skein winder at the top of the column, there's an electronic counter, and we'll get a close up of that in a moment. Um, can't see it from here in this image, but I'll show you also uh, the yarn guide, which attaches to the table, which feeds yarn from the floor. If you have a cone on the floor or what have you, that feeds yarn safely and securely up to the skein winder through an eyelet. And there are some other small differences, but essentially they're identical units from a mechanical standpoint. Uh, they use the same yarn guide arms, the same aluminum arms. The uh, base of the unit that it rests on on the table is identical. And I'll show you uh, how all those things work in a moment. The electronic rotation counter you see on the top of the column is held by a custom made bracket. This bracket also serves two purposes uh, to hold this particular unit, which is a small row counter that we've adapted for this application, but also will hold our electronic rotation counter, which is a high end product similar to our electronic yarn meter. And that will do a whole bunch of significant uh, measurements for you, uh, measuring actual yards, meters. Rotations, of course, will do a countdown or count up function so that if you wanted to do uh, so many yards or so many meters, it will alert you when it reaches that number and also shut off the motor drive if you have a motor drive connected to it. So that's another product. I don't have it on this uh, display right now. It's still in development, but we should have it later this fall in 2010. Now you can see we're using the motor drive system, which is uh, still in development, but it's turning the uh, skein winder, and we're counting off the uh, counting off the rotations. And each time it records a rotation, it sounds a beep as well. So as you can see, that's a pretty valuable feature of having that electronic rotation counter. It actually senses the um, turning of the arm via a magnetic switch built into the wood column. So there's no contact being made, there's nothing being slowed down, and it's extremely accurate as a result. This video is not specifically designed to uh, feature the motor drive system yet because we're not ready to show that yet but you're going to see me operate the unit uh, with a motor drive simply because I've got it set up here and uh, also to whet your appetite. You'll also notice that on the table I have a yarn guide attached to the table with a, uh, a clamp system. These are similar clamps that we use on all of our products but essentially I've got a cone of yarn on the floor feeding up to the skein winder it's going through that eyelet and that comes with the skein winder, it does not come with a swift so people using uh, our unit as a swift would never need this product uh, because you're typically removing yarn from the swift and going to a ball winder and uh, you would not be going through this eyelet there would be no need for it so this is another item that's included with the skein winder we also give you a 10-foot fiberglass tape uh, with the skein winder. And the reason we do that is if you wanted to measure a unusual size skein and get the actual measurement, then you could use this tape. Most tape measures do not go to 10 feet. And since this will measure 80 inches, you need something that will be able to go around 80 inches, so this will do it for you. You'll also notice on each uh, arm, on one of the two surfaces we have a, uh, a measuring guide. This is made of uh, very sturdy vinyl uh, tape that's custom made for us and it shows uh, one meter, um, excuse me, one yard, one meter, one and a half yards, one and a half meters, and two 
yards and two meters. The meters are marked in red and the yards are marked in black. So when you're trying to quickly make an adjustment of your your yarn guide arm, now I've got yarn on this particular arm, but basically you line up the the mark on the yarn guide, which is that black line, with the uh, the line on the arm. And you do that on all four arms. Now typically you'd only you'd, you'd set three of the arms you know, in, in the beginning and leave them there. And you'd use the fourth arm then to adjust. Uh, if you're going to make, uh, for example, the same size skein time in and time again, you know, you just need to, uh, when you when you take the yarn off of the uh, skein winder, you really only need to loosen one of the arms and that will give you enough play to get the uh, skein off. So it's not like you have to adjust all four arms each and every time. But in any event, each of the arms does have this very clear and visible marking system, which is very accurate. The uh, labels on each arm also have, um, they're also visible from another angle, specifically straight on. You'll see a smaller set of numbers that you can read through the uh, yarn guide um, plastic protection plate that we have. and. Uh, so it gives you two different ways to read the, the yardage. One of the extremely unique features of these units, the Swift and the Scheme Winder, is the ability to rotate the unit on the base of the table. Now why would you want to do that? Well in this case you can't see it, but if I had a ball winder off to the side and uh, maybe back from the edge of the table I might need to aim the Swift or the skein winder uh, in that direction, um, but it could be for any number of reasons. But the the fact that we can rotate it a full 90 degrees in that position is uh, extremely valuable. The other thing we can do is we can lift the entire unit up and rotate it, rotate this base 90 degrees, and then we have the ability to aim the unit in a whole other direction. So you have complete the uh, targeting capability, I, I guess I could say, with this unit. You could aim it at any point on the table through both of those means, either rotating the plate by loosening these two screws or repositioning the base and then rotating the plate again. Each unit comes with an uh, integrated handle, whether it be the Swift or the Skein Winder. Even though the Swift doesn't require a handle, we provide it simply because we don't want you grabbing the yarn guide to turn the unit. Those are not designed for that and uh, the handle is a much sturdier assembly. The handle also has a rotating knob on it so that as you turn the unit, you know, the handle is rotating with you. There's no need to reposition your hand. Also, there's another hole in the arm I don't know if you can see it on here. You could move this handle out one, one additional inch and that would increase the leverage but it also increases the turning uh, radius and uh, some people might find that to be less comfortable. Uh, personally I recommend the inner position. That's where we, we uh, position all the handles when they ship from here. Each uh, handle comes with an integrated clip and you know, of course it might tear the end of the yarn at the very end of the strand but it's going to hold your yarn on there securely as you're, as you're making your uh, skein. Each uh, yarn guide post is built up of an assembly and it slides back and forth in the aluminum track. When you get to a point where you want to position it you just turn the knob. And the, the entire assembly has a brake built into it so that as you tighten the knob, it presses against the aluminum. It doesn't leave any marks so that you can repeatedly position the, um, the yarn guide post assembly in the same position time and time again, and yet it won't leave any marks or you know, detents into the material which would be a problem for 
you know, the same position each and every time. This assembly also is designed so that you cannot get yarn caught between the plastic guide and the post. Um, it's a special design that prevents that. Also you have a lip here on the end of the doll so that you cannot get yarn coming off from that side accidentally. It goes out to two meters in that direction and it will go in to make a uh, 27 inch skein in its, in its smallest position. All the knobs that we use are called soft touch knobs. It's a uh, soft rubbery material on the, uh, the grip part. So they're very easy to use, very comfortable to use. Um, and uh, you'll find them, you know, a real joy to use, I think. You'll notice that we use a, a very sturdy assembly to join the two aluminum extrusions. The uh, black steel, we call it a four-lobe washer, literally locks those arms in place. Of course, the arms themselves are locked together, and you'll see that when you go to assemble it. But on top of that, then we put this four-lobe washer in place. This washer, here's one that's unpainted. It's got a special tab. You can see that little metal tab there? That tab fits into the shaft, the steel shaft, and prevents it from rotating. So every aspect of this design was done from a pure engineering standpoint to the very best standards we could come up with for which is almost industrial grade design. Okay, uh, These parts will not fail uh, and they should last a long long time based on the way we've designed it. So I think once you see it and start to put it together you'll be able to see firsthand how strong and rugged this design really is. On each arm there is a physical stop which is a bolt with a rubber cap on it that prevents the arm from going off the extrusion. So it's very well protected, cannot actually come off the uh, arm accidentally because it has that built-in stop. On the Swift, you have a uh, top cap, which is a piece of wood on the top of the column. There's a number of holes in it. Those are designed to accommodate the upgrade to a uh, skein winder if you ever choose to do that. So for example, this hole here is designed to accommodate the magnetic switch, which you go in like that. We press it in. On top of there we would mount our metal bracket and our row counter counting system. And that's how you would, you would adjust uh, your Swift to a skein winder, just by adding a couple of components in there that you can upgrade at any time in the future.